are tuned into the high functioning show. In the place to be. Don't shout, don't run, don't hide, don't stop. This is me coming to you natural and live. Oh uh, yeah. How y'all feel out there? Ah, uh, and it goes a little something like this. One, two, check this check out. This out. <laughs> All right, this is High Functioning Show with Barry Brown, and I've got my guest Phil Wright here. Um, I met Phil Wright, what? I think I actually met you a little bit more like than two months ago, but yeah. I think we never conversated. Yeah, 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 I don't think we had a conversation, um, but yeah, you were... You were you were cool looking. <laughs> you had the shades on. You yeah. had these shades on. Uh, had this hat on. Had this big colorful jacket on. I was like, oh, who's this? Yeah, dude here? <laughs> yeah. I I got to meet you, and then um, we started conversating. Mm-hmm. And you're and you know we you know when you're at a, a a game, we talk about you know other things, and mm-hmm. we said, hey, I said, Phil, what what do you do? And he was like, oh, I do a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I, I'm into motivational and training and all these other amazing things. And uh, you said, I also dance, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know? And that's what immediately caught my eye of like, really, you're a dancer? And you're like, yeah. And then I like <laughs> YouTubed you <laughs> while I was sitting next to you. And I was like, you're like a phenomenon. You're not just like a dancer, homie. Like you're on some other level. And I was like, holy shit, dude. And I asked you to come on the podcast. Yeah, and that's, man. Well, first so of all, you. thank you for having me here, man. Uh, this is a, uh, a great place to be. Um, yeah, this, this, this is a nice spot. Um, Appreciate it. But you know, you know, dancing is just one one little variable of what my life entails. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of different things that's happening right now. Um, I got some apparel coming out mm-hmm. very soon. Um, but I've been dancing for a very, very long time, and now, like you know, I'm getting of age. Yeah, your aches and pains are your aches and pains are kicking in. Yeah, it's starting to. Uh, yeah, it's starting to wear down on me. Right. Now. It, I mean, it's wear and tear. Yeah. I yeah. mean, straight up, and like, if if you haven't seen Phil, if you go on YouTube and type in Phil Wright, you'll just see like a montage of just insane stuff that you do, choreographing, and uh, I mean, it's literally like you're an athlete at the like max capacity, yeah. fucking for a long time. <laughs> yeah, at a, at a long time. So I'm sure you're getting aches and pains easily and you, and you know what i think my first youtube video was like in wow 2013 or something no i'm lying 2009 bro really 2009 i set up my like little sony camera <laughs> before it was like all digital you know yeah you can, i had a little sony silver camera in the corner and i just popped it on the side and then you know a couple of my buddies were talking about this platform called youtube and then i had no clue what it was but I started recording everything and then I started doing my own videos and I, you know, didn't, you know, generate a lot of followers or uh, subscribers until later in the years. I, I've i been on YouTube since 2009. Oh, crazy. So it's been a long haul uh, and just as of recent kind of just blew out of, the, you know, went crazy and then, you know. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of subs. Yeah, I got uh, about 750. 50 subs yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a serious amount <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a lot it's a lot like like the big conspiracy theorists on youtube and <laughs> yeah. the star wars you know nerds yeah. on there that you know break down star wars movies <laughs> have have less subs than you <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy man and you know like when i start thinking about viewers and followers and you know um likes and comments or whatnot like social media has has grown so much where you know, you start to sell out stadiums on your 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 Instagram pages yeah. or your Facebook pages, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it would be great if we can get all all paid for that, right? <laughs> right. right. If we could even get, like fifty cents, right? Like, give me twenty five cents. Just give me a little five yeah. cents. <laughs> yeah. I'd be a millionaire, yeah. right? <laughs> like just a way to monetize it, right? Exactly. Um, you know, but um, you're but from no, the three hundred five. I'm from Miami. Mm-hmm. I'm from Miami, Florida. Uh, moved from Miami. Uh, about seven years ago to LA. Yeah, to LA, jumped to LA, and um, I was about twenty six, and then I had you know I love Miami to mm-hmm, death, mm-hmm. but I just felt like I had squeezed everything that I could out of Miami, so I came home one day and um, 
my then girlfriend now wife yeah your beautiful wife yes my beautiful with wife. the beautiful picture that we she showed us and yeah. made us all like wow yeah like, there's actually love and happiness <laughs> in this world <laughs> yes. yeah <laughs> yes she's been with me since the beginning mm -hmm. uh shout out to ashley right now mm -hmm. she's my wife now um came home i said you know what i'm moving to la i can't we got we gotta i need more and she was like, all right let's go and that was a little shocker too because you know Usually you'll get a, like a little rebuttal. Hey, no, I got this, I got that. No, she was ready to go. We jumped on the plane, and boom, you know, the rest is history. Were you dancing at that time in Miami? Was that like yeah. a, a? It was obviously you grew up, mm -hmm. and that was a big part of your life when mm -hmm. you were growing up. Is dancing? Yeah, absolutely. I was dancing uh, in North North Miami, Aventura, you know. Okay. And danced with a, a couple local dance groups, and then was teaching at several studios there. Did award shows, taught the Miami Heat dancers, you know, done music videos, everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just wanted more. I had a couple of buddies who I had already moved over to L.A. Shout out to Jay Kodish and Calvin Hodge and uh, Antoine Collier. Um, they had moved to L.A. and I was at home watching tv and i can see them performing i'm like man what am i doing bro yeah you know so i said you know what let me get up and go so yeah those, come to hollywood yeah come to hollywood and let's let's give it a shot you know right and, you know worst case scenario i'll just come back you know yeah but you took over in your in your scene here you know yeah i found the you know i found the lane and i ran with it yeah you maximize you yeah maximize I, yeah, it. yeah absolutely and you know what it's sometimes everything that we want isn't what we're going to actually accomplish or need you know what i mean mm -hmm. um, my purpose was served and i i feel like i've found my purpose and my purpose is leading and my purpose is uh guiding the younger generation and uh motivating and um, encouraging anyone i came across you know when so so we play poker once in a while yeah that's yeah. how we met you yeah. know we're, we're nerds and we just like to throw around cards yeah and typically at a game, especially in L.A., mm -hmm. you know, everyone's grinding. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. every time I saw you, you're smiling. <laughs> right. And that's to me was like insane at a poker table. Like, damn, there's just this dude smiling and always happy. And every time I saw you. You were always happy. No matter what, if it I bluffed yeah, or anything. It doesn't matter if you bluff. Like, <laughs> and I can see how people would look at it like, damn, this was kind of like, you know, an a-hole, man. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you laughing at me? Mm -hmm. But so you're just an, like a motivating person. Yeah. You know, You know, I think that, that um, you know, I had been playing poker for a while, you know. And, yeah. Um, I felt like, like once you see me happy in this whole aura or whatnot, that really goes to the testament to where, you know, this guy has really, you know, found his purpose and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know what it was like when I didn't know what I was going to do. Right. And that's when I, you know, was more distraught. I was, I was a little bit more concentrated. I was a little bit, you know, kept to myself. Mm -hmm. um, but now, like, it's almost like at the end of the movie of Matrix, like you could just see the green screen right. or whatever. Right. Everything is just like. You're seeing it. Yeah, right. man. So yeah, that's that's probably you're one always of the a happy why. guy, and I, that's I think why I radiated towards you in general. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. always smiling. You know, if we we were in a hand and and, I, and you lost, you'd be laughing. <laughs> if you won, you'd be laughing. Um, and and that was kind of like I was like, yo, who is this guy? This guy's like just always happy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and then I did dig into you, and I was like, damn, he's just a really good person all the way around. Um, which is a hard thing to find. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I appreciate that. I really do. You know. Uh, not to say that I haven't gone through anything, you know what I mean? A lot of that radiates from uh, pain, hard times. Um, you know, even yesterday was my mom's birthday and she yeah, just sorry. passed. Yeah, I'm sorry passed, that. Uh, No, it's okay. And, um, you know, May is a very hard month for me, you know. And um, there's a lot of things that I've dealt with in the past where, you know, you deal with little minuscule things on the side and it's just you got to laugh at it because there's been so much more that you've been through mm -hmm. you know and it's it's important to remember that it's always going to be worse right it could be worse and you know that's why i take that approach and i'm very very i'm a big advocate for happiness and you know fighting with light than anything else yeah mm -hmm. on your um on your path because when you look at people that you know said they wanted to do something they did it you mm -hmm. know it's like 
it takes a lot of guts. Yeah. And I think a lot of people out there that want to come to LA and figure it out mm-hmm. and, and do something. Cause obviously there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, I've been around, I'm born and raised here, but I've been around and I know that there's a, it's, it's, there's a lot of opportunity here, but it's just so competitive. Yes. Um, and it's just so hard and like mafias on every division <laughs> from like yes. talent scouts to direction and mm-hmm. acting and you know, whatever. Yes. Um, and then you find, you, you know, you, you did it. You, you came out here, you, you said, this is what I'm going to do. You took your girl with you. Mm-hmm. She believed in you. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You guys came to sunny LA mm-hmm. and you've, you've maximized where you're at Mm -hmm. you know what's what's the next step for you now right like you said you want to move on to different different stuff yeah um i mean the next step you know uh is in the works at the moment i can't talk about it so so much mm -hmm. but i will say that uh there's a brand under phil wright inc called the parent jam uh, which is going to be, or if not already, uh, the new wave of unity, uh, positivity uh, on a dance platform. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be humongous, and uh, I wish I could really explain a little bit more, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but I can't due to legal reasons. Okay. But if... Um, you know what I'm doing is spreading word and letting everyone know just to get on the train now mm-hmm. because it's about to take off. Go follow the Parent Jam page on Instagram, um, and that's just spelled the Parent Jam, the Parent Jam. on on Instagram. And um, that is more of my concentration moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially, what it is is where you know you you watch a typical dance class, you have Everyone taught the routine. Everyone gets like in a little semicircle. We film it. Uh, usually it's the kids that's really like doing miraculous things or whatnot. And um, one day I thought of the idea of all of the parents that were outside, they were watching, I was like, man, what are they doing? Like, they're not doing anything. We can probably get them in, in the classroom. And instead of, cause at first I was thinking, you know what? I've held like adult classes before. Right. But why separate it? Let's put everybody in here together. Yeah. Make double the money. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Make double the money. Right. Uh, and and put parents in a position where they can understand more about what their children go through. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays I feel like we point the finger a lot, especially if we're parents or whatnot. We we forget how difficult it is we got to make straight a's we got to come brush our teeth don't get bullied don't bully stay off of social media make up your bed whatever the case may be that's a lot of responsibility that you can put on a 10 11 year old child Mm -hmm. so now i say you know what i'm gonna put them in here right and have them go through it have them step step in the middle of the the dance floor and perform a, a routine that i've taught them within 30 minutes Let's That's crazy. If, let's see if you can do it. And yeah. it's, you know what's the more crazy part about it, Barry, is is that when you put the parents and the child right next to each other, you can kind of see the traits. Oh, related, crazy! Right, right, right. I, from one parent to the to the child, child, you know, and the characteristics that the child may have, most likely. The parents, the parents have, have. <laughs> right. Like, so if they mess up out of step, you're like, they, <laughs> they make that's the same rhythm. You guys got the hey. same rhythm. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's it's passed on for sure. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. that's a crazy thing. My father passed, and I didn't get to know him. Oh, we I'm knew sorry. each other, but I didn't. Uh, you know, we knew each other well, but I never hung out with him a lot. Right, he was always working, mm-hmm. and he was a musician. Mm-hmm. And when he passed, I I play guitar, and he played guitar. Mm-hmm. I had listened to him on iTunes, and my girl was like, "Damn, like, is that you?" jamming Mm -hmm. because like the way he attacks a pocket on a solo like on a blues jazz solo is exactly the same wow and um did he did he teach you no he never taught me um i never listened to him when i was growing up Mm -hmm. we just attacked the same it's literally the same and uh when you look at what they did with rats Mm -hmm. when rats you know are going through science experiments they would um shock mice mm-hmm. in the brain with a psychoelectric shock okay. shocker. Every time they eat a grape, they would shock them and make them not want to eat grapes. So oh, wow. they didn't want to get shocked, so they hate grapes. Their offspring mm-hmm. come out of the womb 
hating grapes. Oh, wow. So wow. for that's sure, nice. I think that's all passed on. Just yeah. like when you would see kids that can draw really well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a lot of the times their parents could draw really well. Right, 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 um, right, right. I think on a dance grind, I want to talk about that too because it's just so interesting to me. I grew up, you know, as a popper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you tell me. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of lame. It's like when people are like, what do you do? I'm a popper. <laughs> yeah, like, you oh, tell me. You know, me. <laughs> oh, wow, cool. You just pop. Yeah, it's, for some reason I do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I always, always had homies that were just insanely good at yeah. all the way around, like b-boying, jazz, lyrical, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that grind is a grind beyond bro beyond it's It's like crabs in a bucket yeah everyone especially you know here in la you know what i mean like you come to la for the platform right Mm -hmm. oh you moved oh you're in la oh oh you know what i mean yeah but people don't realize there's tons of people who do exactly what you do Mm -hmm. you know and how can you uniquely stand out from the crowd yeah you know what i mean so uh you know, having said all of that, you know, you really have to find your path and make your story more unique than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, no one's story is better than the other. Right. You know, I mean, you're extremely talented at what you do. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I mean, that, you bro. really are. Thank and, you, bro. you know, I think as like cr- coming from my little skill of dancing, but just really being an advocate for it and loving it because it's like you feel it, it's in your soul. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel the emotion when you dance. Yeah. And I and I'm like, you know, I went on YouTube and I was just like watching everything you did. Um, and I was just like, damn, like you're really insane. And then like how you choreograph the pieces to the songs, like how does that begin? Do you do you like is it sometimes is it like a jam where you just dance to it and then start piecing pieces together mm-hmm. like how does a how does choreography choreograph well, happen well the majority comes from inspiration you know what i mean mm-hmm. um a lot of it has to do with music selection um feeling a lot of it from emotion uh sometimes you know i some of my best pieces are emotionally attached to what I'm going through at the present moment. Um, you know, and the process is majority of the time I'm in my house and I, I've built this mirror on my wall and I shut off all the lights and I put on the song and I play it over and over. And, you know, and um, I do what I feel and emotionally when you're that in sync with the music, the the there's endless amounts of movement that you can produce out of your body, you know, um, especially if you're in that zone. Now, if you're you're doing it for a product, which happens, you know, mm-hmm. hey, you have a project to do. Sometimes your best work may not come out because it isn't uh, synced in with your emotion and the music that you're selecting because usually you're given that music that piece of music to promote on your page mm-hmm. so it isn't really attached to your life your story your you know whatever you're going through at the present moment you know and that's what's happening you know and I think it's a beautiful thing because now dancers are becoming more important right you know? they're not just in the background oh bro right. we're becoming much more important um, now it's getting to where the artists are calling the dancers or emailing the dancers and say, hey, can you do, th- I'm doing this campaign. Can you put a piece together, put a piece together, put it up on your Instagram. That's all we want to do. Um, okay, I can do that. Um, we'll give you X amount of dollars. No, I don't want that. Well, how do you, what, um, what do you want? I need ABC amount, amount of dollars. Okay, cool. Boom. Mm-hmm. Now we're in positions to negotiate. Right. Whereas before. It wasn't. You're extras. <laughs> no, dude. You was yeah. on MTV. Yeah. <laughs> background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bra- yeah. You was that in was the it. Back, you know yeah. what I mean? That, yeah. That's all you got. And now we're becoming much more important and we're becoming much more. Um, we're we're You're storytellers. Our- you guys are transcending Absolutely. music mm-hmm. and, and, and storytelling. Absolutely. So. Um, I believe what's happening in the industry is a, a beautiful thing. I think social media had a big, big uh, influence on that. And um, we're sort of like cutting out the middleman. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Where um, the dancers have the agencies and the agencies have the production companies mm-hmm. and the, all the resources or whatnot. But now social media has kind of eliminated. 
I don't want to say eliminate it entirely because agencies are still important. Sure. Because they have huge amount of opportunities for the dancers. But now the dancers can survive. Right. Whereas before <laughs> you was you were not able to survive without an agency. Yeah. Uh, no way impossible, especially living in L.A., you know, living from job to job, gig to gig, paycheck to paycheck. Like what's a what's a typical life for a dancer? They 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 come out here and they're just trying to get, you know, work on shows and, and, and music uh, videos and, mm -hmm. and just kind of getting through that whole circuit. Is that kind of like do the, the typical dancers lifestyle? You move to L.A., you don't have a place to stay, you're bucking from place to place no money mm -hmm. um and if you do have money you you you're dancing at gigs for just the money and on top of that you're dancing gigs just a network that right. are free shows that you're not going to get paid for yeah you know um the dancer's life is is a struggle man and yeah. I am, I'm almost reluctant to teach my children how to dance because <laughs> I don't want them to go through that struggle right right um, but um it's a it's a beautiful thing once you find a peace of mind and um know how to balance the two because i tell my friends all the time who move from miami to la or wherever they come from to la is that dude you got to get a job right get a regular job you know and use that job not don't let the job use you mm -hmm. you know um i moved to la and then i bro it, it wasn't about dancing i wanted to dance Bro, I had to survive. Yeah. I had to survive. I got a job at LA Fitness. Yeah. Started working there for like nine months, bro. I was a <laughs> hardcore salesman. Yeah. Just grinding <laughs> I was everyone. Grinding, yeah. bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And going from broke to making twelve hundred dollars every two weeks was fire. a real, oh fire, yeah. bro. <laughs> fire. Right. You know, and then, you know, I had my my epiphany on, you know what? I need to quit. So I saved my money. I quit. And boom, the rest is history. You know what yeah. I mean? So my advice to all the dancers out there, you know, don't get caught up in this whole, okay, hustle, hustle life. It is about the hustle life, but you got to live first. You know what I mean? You got to eat, Yeah. you know, and just have a plan. You know, a lot of my buddies don't have a plan. They, they move here, they get a job, and then they get caught up in the job, and they let the job use them, and then they ended up losing the dream that they came out here for and they just get older and they and get older, older and, and older, older. Yes. yeah exactly. that, that's the thing it's like i grew up like watching there was a movie called white knight mm -hmm. uh, which was such a great piece by the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i really love that movie mm -hmm. um and obviously like beach street and all the old school films mm -hmm. and i would always see dancers you know like they really came out here and they're like i'm gonna make it and like this is my passion yeah and I was like, damn, like, what do you, how do you make bread? Like, what, what is, where's the money in it? Um, and today, because of social media, it's a whole different game. And I think it's like storytelling mm -hmm. and you becoming the marketing asset yourself. People want, mm -hmm. they need you to tell the story through the way that you would look at their piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's like the whole new grind now is building your personality. Absolutely. With your now, now it's becoming to where we, we have to almost build we have the tools to build our own market for the bigger markets to reach out to us. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I, I'm a big you know, fan of is building the product before you even tell me what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I want another production company or a bigger organization or company to just look at me and be like, okay, how can we just add Phil Wright's brand to what we have to make us bigger right. rather than, you know, going on knocking on doors. Hey, I have this to offer. Building an empire within my own and then having, creating good energy to where everyone else wants to be involved. You know, I think that's more important. I think you have to start with thyself. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and you're a teacher too. That's, yeah. That's the other thing, mm -hmm. which is another talent. I mean, you being able to, you know sit there and explain and teach the youth mm -hmm. um not just dancing i mean it's it's emotional it's a you know it's bringing them the emotions out of somebody mm -hmm. um you know that's a whole nother you know animal. yo that's a whole nother animal <laughs> <laughs> you know patience is key you yeah. know i love kids mm -hmm. i can see it in your videos dude like oh man it's so like when i when kids dance 
Oh, I get yeah. so happy. Yeah, everyone gets happy. Bro, kids win, bro. Yeah, kids win. win. And you know what's crazy? The kids are the ones that's booking the jobs now. Yeah. <laughs> For real, right, over right. the adults, you know? Yeah. But no, man, I've, I've started out teaching kids. Um, I've always enjoyed kids for some odd reason. I don't know what I do. I have a natural, not to toot my horn or anything, but kids always just- Gravitate are, towards you. Yes, man. Yeah. And I actually moved away from Miami to LA to get away from the kids. <laughs> and they come right on back, bro. And you know, you know, uh, a buddy of mine t- told me, man, hey, yeah, you are what you are, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Just maximize on what you do and do it the best and stop concentrating on the things that you're you're not so good at and do what you do best bro and for me is working with kids um uh educating the youth motivating inspiring and those are the things that i'm really good with um due to past situations and you had um i guess what like cardi b reposted yeah. one of your one of your like oh, uh she's reposted like five of my videos uh, all your cardi already. B, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen phil's cardi b stuff it's insane <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm a big cardi b fan though <laughs> yeah i mean just your moves bro like yeah. you're just born for fucking just <laughs> doing crazy stuff with your body yeah man um I'm, I'm a big cardi b fan i actually got to choreograph her uh well not her video but g Easy's video uh-huh. no limit that she was a part of that's sick yeah and uh one of the directors saw my youtube video to cardi b's verse and was like yo i need you on this i need you i need you uh, can you come in saturday yeah i said sure how did you hear about that? youtube youtube dude just come in <laughs> i'm like okay let's do it <laughs> you know and you're gonna start doing more motivational stuff now right absolutely um um i've I've actually set up a plan with a buddy of mine uh, to only speak because I, I I get this a lot. A lot of people are moved by the words that I say mm-hmm. and um, they love my dancing and my dancing is cool or whatnot. But after most of my classes, I give my kids and the adults, more importantly, a good word before they leave. It's nothing, good. nothing spiritual related or, right. you know, religious related, just very uplifting positive positive word before they leave and i think that's important and majority of the time what happens is that people leave with that more than the choreography that i give them so i'm taking on uh a bigger approach to uh motivating and uh speaking uh, more often than usual um I'm trying to get to the point where I don't have to dance to get there. Right. But right now, I'm using my dance platform, my yeah. craft, to get to that next step. Right. And um, but that's what dance was there for you for. You know, it was it, it was a, a God given talent. I appreciate that, and yeah. you know that's that's some that's how it works sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? You mm-hmm. have to utilize everything as a tool. You know, you use your tools to get where you need to get. You use that tool, boom and boom and boom boom. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yes, I'm motiv- um, doing motivational speaking a little bit more, um, you know, on my uh, IGTV, uh, on my, you know, my regular uh, Instagram page, Phil underscore right underscore. Uh, you can, you know, follow all of that good stuff. And um, yeah. you do like kind of daily posts or weekly posts. Of- I sort of do like a every, you know, I post about like three motivational things uh, a week. Uh-huh. Um and that's just a word, you know what I mean? A word or two, a minute and a half, you know? And um, I'm very inspired by, you know, uh, Gary V. I'll follow Gary V. Yeah, Gary V's dope. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I like Gary V. Um, I like his material. I was following uh, E.T., the hip hop preacher, for a while, you know? And um, I love them and they motivate me. And it's hard to be the motivator. Right. Who motivates you? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, I find those to be inspiring people for me too in you know in this world that we're in especially your world who were your influences growing up Mm. can be anybody doesn't have to just be people that were good at dancing Mm. who's the people that put you in your place meaning that made you inspired Wow. Uh, Mine was Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. 
Mine was MC Hammer. MC Hammer's the best answer <laughs> of all time. Of all time. Of all time. <laughs> and you, you know, the reason why I, I paused for a very long time is because MC Hammer was God for me. Like He was he, so amazing. Dude, like, you know, like... <laughs> he was so amazing. I had VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. I just popped them in and just watched Hammer, don't hurt him. He's, oh, da, yeah, da, yeah. Da, 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 yep. You know, and um, and the reason why it, meant, it means so much to me is because now I'm choreographing for MC Hammer and his summer tour. That's so and sick. It's so like, oh my God, I can't, I just, I still don't believe it. You know what I mean? And that's why it means so much to me is because my idol became my boss right you know and i talk i have his number dude like that's like ill his number to have in your phone you you know what i mean like i talk to him yeah yo what's up phil i'm like yo i still get chills (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know what i'm saying and if you could text mc hammer that's pretty legit (laughs) like you've made it in my book you're like you know (laughs) yes man I, i i'm not gonna lie i think mc hammer was one of the illest dancers that i saw growing up as a kid too now let me let me ask you this question and this is what he said um we were talking about when was the last time you seen a rapper and a dancer a dancing rapper perform all the way through full out dancing and rapping not singing i think the uh, last time i saw one was Deion Sanders. <laughs> and that career was short. <laughs> no. Um, actually, I don't I don't think I've seen another one. Not one, bro. Especially one that could battle you. Like, you just demolish everyone in the background. Every other s- successfully skilled, trained dancer that he has, mm-hmm. he could just shred them apart. Yeah, yeah. Bro, not one. That's why I, we... You're really thinking about it, right? Yeah, that's why like, we pray. M- yeah. <laughs> That's why we so break. hard. That track's so hard. <laughs> yeah, that track's you know, so hard, bro. And um, icon, he's just an icon, bro. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, for me to have the opportunity to put my work, and you know, what? he told me this too. He said, um, he said, uh, usually he's been he's been doing this for years and decades and whatnot, and uh, he just recently reached out to me to do his 25th anniversary at the Staples Center. That's so and that was my first gig with him. So yeah. I'm tripping out. Um, and uh, he goes, you know, this is the first time I've never, never, ever reached out to anyone outside of my camp until you, until you, Phil. And um, this is the first time I've ever reached outside of my camp to choreograph or even put together anything um for me to perform at my shows and it's you know when he says that yeah you just get taken back you're like yo chill bro (laughs) is he still and he's still dancing he's still Still dancing we're going on tour uh one of the first shows uh is june 7th um in saratoga california and then we got a whole lineup uh within the whole time uh it's called the house house party tour i'm i'm going oh uh, man bro i got you bro. i'm going i got, I got I'm going. you bro. i'll get chills just seeing <laughs> you guys dance up there would be insane bro i appreciate it man yeah man for sure and uh we're going on tour full tour everything loaded fully loaded bro his style transcended i used to have an indian homie um his parents were like indian and they used to sell like the baggy pants the that baggy, he wore yeah. mm-hmm. outside of 7-Elevens and Vans Mm -hmm. and like they survived off MC Hammer swag like that he literally and dude think about those pants those pants were made years ago yeah and then you you didn't see them for a while and then back in the late like early 2000s you start to see See like trickling back come back they weren't called the MC Hammer pants anymore they were called like drop crotches and you know stuff like that so Dog, he revolutionary. Like he's, he's revolutionary. He's a true performer. Crazy, he's a true performer. Crazy, crazy man. That's so. insane. I didn't know you were doing MC Hammer. I'm like super jealous now. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> you know, there are other choreographers on the gig too. Shout out to Tiffany Miller, um, and um, majority 
of the camp has been with him for a very long time. Um, and there's a lot of great dancers that are on there and I'm um, just proud to be a part of the family. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And and you and your wife, um, I was noticed you guys do like funny social skits all the time, right? Like on uh, on Instagram. Yeah. I see you guys have like these funny comedic <laughs> things that you guys do. Yeah, um, you know, she's she's a she's an aspiring actress Mm -hmm. so she's taking classes you know she's booking jobs here and there and um you know i tell her all the time man like let's do some funny stuff yeah you know let's live a little you know what I mean? you guys should do way more and just keep doing them i know a lot of people keep telling us like we need our own like show your own show for sure our own show and um she loves it um i could tell you know we 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 have a good time doing so and we have we find that a lot of people like to see how we live at home too. So yeah. we're cool with it, bro. You're we're, your own reality show. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Once again, building our own empire for you know a production company. Be like, hey, you know what? I got this cool idea. We want to use you too. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. Obviously, that you know that would be great, but that's really not the motive. We're just doing what we having love fun. To. Exactly. So yeah, the actor grind's crazy. I grew up in um, the valley, and my homies. One of my best friends growing up, his family owned like a world-renowned acting class. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. A lot of actors came out of there. It's on Ventura. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and I would see the actors grind the way oh. that you saw the dancing grind. Oh, yeah. I mm-hmm. saw the actors grind mm-hmm. on a heavy level because his parents owned it for 30 years mm-hmm. and they're Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I would just go there every day after school and chill. Yeah. And just watch actors on stage, actors on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just practice their auditions and all that. Mm-hmm. And that whole grind is crazy. Crazy, you know? dude. Crazy. It's, and you know what? I don't really, I don't know exactly how deep it is. Yeah. But from what I see what my wife doing, she's bringing home scripts. She's reading over and over. She's like, hey, can you read this? I'm like, dude, I don't know what I read. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you I just move, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> put on a beat. Is there a beat in that shit? <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh, but she's always asking me to read what I have to read with her. And, um, bro, it's, it's huge. And the monologues that she has to recite. I can't even remember like what I ate dude, I don't an know, hour ago. I don't know my ABCs, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like how the hell do these people remember all that shit? I don't know, and you know, and then on top of that, being in tune with the character that they had to portray, right. it's crazy, it's dude. It's about the character, not yeah. them. They yeah, have to absolutely. pull that out. They have to conform to some type of character every single time, and that's, that's a talent in itself, and I have much respect for any actor out there that's trying to get it. Yeah, you know? it's it's an inspiration, and I and I remember one of the things that they would say is it sometimes doesn't happen tomorrow. Yeah. You know, sometimes it takes ten years. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes twenty years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and I would see people come out here, try really hard for two years, give yeah. it their all, yeah. and go through all the bullshit here mm-hmm. in L.A. and Hollywood, mm-hmm. which is a lot of bullshit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they would just give up. Yeah, and but you know what? Even when it does happen, you're still thinking about the next job. Right? Yeah, even yeah. even when you you book that big gig, mm-hmm. bro, that gig is gonna end soon. Right, you, right. you gotta keep going. You gotta think about the next step. So you know, it's it's very important. Us as artists, that's what we deal with. We're very free. Yeah. But that's the consequence that we deal with is what's next. Yeah. You know, um, which can be a joyful thing too because some people like the the anticipation don't know where to go yeah don't know where to go i'll freeze a bird you know yeah i'm just gonna bounce around i I go where the wind blows me you know as opposed to you know clocking in and clocking out you know the one thing that i did notice though with people is that it's it's easier now to just build your own like person your own reality on on instagram Mm -hmm. and then they have it's a force to be reckoned with Mm -hmm. you know i was sitting in a record label before Mm -hmm. with a couple you know, famous producers that I was just like, want their entourage. Mm-hmm. And another label came in and was like, they were like listening to people that I guess were having meetings that they wanted to sign or whatever. And like, the only thing they cared about was their Instagram. Wow. Like, like I was like, yo, that record's sick. Like in my head, I was like, yo dude, like they just played me the next Celine Dion of this generation. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like whoever that's a super ill at singing. Right. And it was just like, yeah, but you know, she needs another six months of like more See, hey, you, you know what that is? That's them trying to cut ties with how much work they have to do to promote. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, that's the sad part because, I mean, I get it from a business standpoint. You want to work less. Um, 
but I don't think anyone's talent should be judged off of how many followers. And that's all it was. It was like people came in like the first page of their re- like their record and their things like this is a social media, these many plays, these yeah. many down. I'm like, damn, like, damn. and they were just like, yeah, that's not there yet. And I was like, low key, I was gonna pull out, like, yo, dude, I'll sign you, homie. Like, yeah, I don't got the yeah. paper they got, but yeah. like, I get you five hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, we'll go, for, yeah. we'll go grind this shit yeah. right now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, cause you're like ill, like, that's so sick, man. Yeah, that's sick. and you know that's that's what it's coming to. You know, even with the emails that I get. Um, you know, actually, you're top tier now. You have blue check mark. So it's like you want a meeting with Phil. He got a blue check mark on me. I don't know if you really you, want his rate. His get, daily rate's crazy. And it's crazy <laughs> how a sticker can change everything. Yeah, it's crazy how that little button can make me feel. Or and it, you know, it's real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah, it's not, reality now. Yeah, it's real. Like I feel even when I woke up, I woke up to the day that I you know saw the blue check mark. I was like, I'm somebody Jeez, for real. Now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me put on. <laughs> let me put on my. Yeah. You know. You gotta wear sunglasses to sleep now, player. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just like when I got it, when I you DM me back and I was like, damn, I got a homie in here that got a blue check mark. Huh? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, and it's crazy, man. What 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 things can do and change your whole aspect of thinking. And I think that we, as a people, can do better with. Uh, less labeling, right? You know, like we can't we can't label everything that we come across. Yeah, you know, I don't think I think everyone is already labeled by their faces. That's why everyone has a different face, right? You know what I mean? And uh, I think everyone has something special to offer. I, I, I as much as we want to hate it, I actually I like it too. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mm-hmm. it's cool that we're connecting this way, and I think there's always positive to it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I think. The blue check mark is also like, damn, this person's really doing something. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know what? It goes, it, it, if it's genuine, mm-hmm. you know, right. if it's genuine, you know, some people, you know, fake it, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, whatever, do what they can. But if it's genuine, you know, you'll see the, 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 the goodness transpire out of that person or whatever that label is attached to. It's, it's hard to meet good people, Phil. It's even harder to like become friends with good people. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that I met you. Um, Thank you, bro. When I met you, right. I lost money to you. <laughs> um, and then you laughed. <laughs> Did I? No, <laughs> but, but hold up. But you just laugh because you're just a happy person. And like, I'm not gonna like low key was super tilted and like had to walk away for a second. Cause I was like, damn, this dude's just laughing and shit. Um, but then, you know, I was like, every time I saw you, you were happy. Yeah. And I, that's what gravitated me toward you. I said in the beginning, I was like, man, this guy's always happy, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. I'm I'm a nerd, you know? I'm good in a dark room mm-hmm. with a video game mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. some Cheez-Its. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I have some social uh, problems. Yeah. And everyone that makes me is happy all the time mm-hmm. kind of weirds me out a little bit. But I like weird people. So that's what I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yo, this, this dude feels, he's hella dope. Um, and uh you know i think genuinely all the way around um you know creeping through your social i just see a really good person i see a good person that dances and and spiritually moves people Mm -hmm. you know you guide our youth Mm -hmm. which is crazy you know what i mean like that's just amazing like i look at the job yeah i look at teachers you know like damn you guys are guiding youth yeah positivity you know it's not an easy job you know to be honest with you it's more the parents that you have to deal with than the right. student. Right. You know, I've heard that kids. before. Yeah, man. I've like, heard that before. It's, it's, it's like in sports, you're dealing with the parents. Yeah, yeah. It's the parents, man. And you know, if you can talk to the parents and get on the same page with them, you'll be just fine. But you, 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 you of course you're going to run into a couple people who are going to challenge you. Yeah. But you got to make sure that you fight with light. You know what I mean? And the kids don't know no better. You know, they're, they're looking, Oh, you dance cool or you yeah. rap good or whatever. I want to be like you. And, you know, and I've always told my older kids, like my teens, like you're someone's hero right now. Right. And you don't even know it. Have so, you ever met those crazy parents or like those pageant parents or just like super like. Yeah. Like just super <laughs> insane. They're everywhere. Really? <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> um, but, you know, for the most part, um, I have a good amount of people um especially my students who take class from me on the regular the you know the parents are very understanding 
um, and I'm grateful to have them consistently in my classes. And um, I'm grateful for anybody to come take my class. Yeah. But you know, for the ones that challenge me from day to day, you know, hey, you know, you got to take the you know good with the you know not yeah. even bad, but you know just with the weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the odd. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not there. They're not necessarily bad, bad people. They're just they're just OCD. Right. Insane. I don't even know bit. how to really right, say right, it. Right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so how does one uh, get to connect with you and then also possibly take a class from you? Where, 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 where do you teach regularly here in L.A.? Or Well, I, I do teach as often as I can, um, especially um, now that, you know, I'm here in L.A., I'm living here. Mm -hmm. um, people can t they, they usually contact me through email. That's the best way. Mm -hmm. um, PhilWrightInc7 at gmail.com. Uh, where you know you can book your parent jam classes, you can book uh, your master classes, your beginning sessions, your private lessons, your motivational sessions, your Q and A's. Uh, that's the the most typical way that anyone can uh, get in touch with me uh, professionally. And then you know I have my IG. You can send me a DM. And then I will forward you to my yeah, email. Yeah, to your email. That's what I got forwarded to. I was like, what's up, Blair? I got a blue check mark I'm texting right now. Um, and then the, but you do you do some classes at Millennium? Is that the studio? Yeah, Millennium at? Dance Complex is uh, the studio that I teach at uh, most, most frequently. Uh, but I, I do teach everywhere. I do teach at Debbie Reynolds uh, Legacy Studio. Um, you know, Millennium Dance Complex, Light um, Dance Studios in Santa Clarita, um, EXPG in Hollywood. It's, I'm I'm everywhere. I, I, I want it to be as free as possible. I don't right. want to stay confined to one studio or whatnot because, you know, I'm, I'm a brand in itself. You are. Um, and then on these classes, how long did, like, uh, let's just, let's say, I just want to give a little bit more information for people watching. Mm -hmm. If I want to dance, I'm like, I want to hang out and you know learn um, a beginner class from you. Mm -hmm. How long? How long are those sessions? You thirty to a minute? Uh, thirty to an hour? Uh, typically, it's an hour, uh -huh. especially if it's a beginning class. A beginning class uh, is about an hour. The more advanced to master classes are an hour and a half, uh, and that usually entails uh, you know videotaping, um, filming, and uh, choreography training, cross the floors, whatnot, and um, yeah, that's. The master classes is what usually I get in my emails. Hey, can you come to Texas to teach this master class? Hey, can you come to Arkansas to teach this class? That's why you're always out of town. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. I'm usually on a plane somewhere. Yeah. And uh, which I love because I get to travel. travel. I get to yeah. travel, and all expenses are you know taken care of, and I just got to do my job. It's not always easy though. You yeah. Know, you get on a plane and tiring. Do you? And that's the hardest part, you know. The classes are easy because that's something naturally I can I enjoy and I can do. But when you get on the plane, people don't understand. Look, you got to get in the Uber, get to the airport, deal with airport, get on the plane, get off the plane, get it back in another Uber, get to the hotel, check in, try to find a macaroni yelp, and cheese. Yeah, yelp shop. something <laughs> fire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Read the comments. Make sure that where you're eating's got yeah. some like. Yeah. four level stars or a and, blue check mark and to even yeah. to even know if you have uber eats in your area yeah. you know yeah. what i mean yeah. <laughs> sometimes one time i got to a spot there was no uber no lyft no nothing nowhere <laughs> dude you're done yeah i'm yeah. done so um you know and then do it all over again you know and that's the part no one sees so that's why i'm very very um keen on showing those type of things on my instagram stories and so people can understand like the behind the scenes and it's not always, you know, you know, flowers, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's a grind. Always, yeah, You're it's in the a grind. huge, huge, huge grind. And then you got to wear and tear your body. Exactly. And, and then get off the, and then get physical, you yeah, know what I mean? And, yeah. and dance and then go back to the room sweaty, yeah. shower up and do it all over again. So it's, it's very, very important to show the behind the scenes so everyone can understand. And that's the reason why you pay this amount of dollars because, or this is the reason why you charge this because now it becomes more of a lifestyle than anything. 
you know what styles do you teach um is there like an actual style is it like a jazz is it lyrical is it hip-hop is it a blend of everything yeah. well commercially commercially it would be hip-hop you know okay. what i mean um but nowadays dance is fused into each other so well yeah like you can't even categorize anything anymore, right? Really? Yeah. Really? Especially dealing with choreography now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you're just, um, if you're breaking, okay, you're breaking. You know what I mean? That's, we obviously know what breaking is. Um, but now choreography is, I, I have almost feel like choreography should be a section. Yeah. You know? So it should be like, you know, of hip hop, you have your breaking, your pop locking, and your your house, and it should just be like choreography, honestly, because now that's what it's turning into. People are not um, utilizing the grooves anymore, mm -hmm. you know. And if they are using the grooves, they're implementing it in the choreography that they're doing. So it isn't really um, a style that I particularly teach. Um, it's just choreography. It's just choreography. Choreography. Choreography, and it's um, storytelling, um, emotionally attached, everything, you know. And I I try to get back to the foundations and uh, pull from those foundations. Of, okay, I feel like a little house today. Yeah. And I pull that and I put it, implement it in my choreography. And it is an all house. It'll yeah. be like a little house here. And a little pop lock in here, you know what I mean? And a little illusion here, a little miming here. So, you know, it isn't any particular. I don't it's really just know like a answer. blend of everything. It's just a blend of everything. And I try to be every, you know, try to implement those as much as possible so I can stay well grounded too. I always liked having homies like you because growing up, and I know we have no much time, but no, okay. growing up, I, I was around a lot of dancers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One of my boys right now is Poppin' John, and he's doing his hey. thing. He was on Ellen. He mm -hmm. just was on, like, the American Got Talent mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. um, or America Dance show, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then there's, like, Nonstop Marquise. Nonstop. I don't know if you heard of him. He's pretty dope. Really? Nonstop Marquise. Marquise. Um, uh, John Bugs. He did John that, Bugs, that cool video. That's my guy right yeah. there. My guy, John. Um, that's but, so funny. <laughs> but but I, I didn't grow up with all those guys, but but I always, for some reason, made friends with dancers. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like when there's other people when you like when you were young, you would go and pull up and they'd be like, I got the homies. On. Like if you want to pull up to a fight. Right. I got the big homies pulling up like, you know, <laughs> but when I would go to a club, I would like I would always feel like these fools don't even know who I'm pulling up with right now. <laughs> like I'm pulling up with three homies that are about to tear this club down. Tear it down like yeah. we're like cool with your bottles. That's mm -hmm. that's tight. You got a nice car. Like, that's tight. Like you don't know what's about to happen. Like I got homies right here that are about to get on the dance floor and, and own up. the whole club. Absolutely. Period. <laughs> you guys are, don't know who I just rolled up with. And uh, and it would always happen. Like we'd go out and, you know, mm -hmm. and start dancing a little bit. And like, you know, people are dancing and then my homies would just break out. And it's like, yeah. we own the whole place. Yeah. So I always feel like cool when I got my homies with me. Like, you don't know, like we can pop off at any minute, bro. Yeah, like, absolutely. And you know, it's good to have those people around you. You know what I yeah. mean? Especially you roll up and you're a dancer too. Bro, yeah. that's no better feeling than going in and tearing down the club yeah. with your boys. It's you know? amazing. It's it's a great feeling, man. Yeah. It's almost like a high. Like, it is. You know, like it a is. drug, almost. You just pull be. up with a bunch of dancers. That's it. You, you run the night. And everyone's everyone's feeling it. Everyone's in it. You know yeah. what I mean? You lighten up the club. I always said if I mm -hmm. owned a club, mm -hmm. like I'm just going to have like in-house dancers. Like, yo, dude, you're like getting paid as much as the night. Exactly. You're going to go tear up every night. Yeah. Like, yep. cause it, it really does yeah. bring up, that it club. amps up everything, you mm -hmm. know, and you know, everyone goes to the club, you know, either to look cool or, you know, show off their, their latest outfit, you mm -hmm. know, whereas, you know, the dancers actually utilize that time. And if you're a true dancer, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, th those are moments where you can utilize your talents to just live, mm -hmm. live, 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 you know, but yeah. Phil, I was, um. I'm really glad I met you, and I hope we get to do like maybe like a monthly episode and and get updates from you. Um, I would love to and 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 talk about what you got going because I know you do have a lot a lot of shit planned. Yes, a lot of really good stuff planned, mm -hmm. and I think anyone that's planning to do positive stuff in this world is is doing something. Thank you, man. Thank you know, you. and I know, and and again, I know you're very positive person and that outlook is such a breath of fresh air especially mm -hmm. when you're sitting in traffic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like just there's you know and um 
you know, I, I can't wait to see what you have coming out because mm-hmm. I know it's going to be fire. Um, if you haven't seen Phil, you need to go on his Instagram and and, and lurk and creep. <laughs> um, maybe get a little jealous yeah. <laughs> that uh, you have, you know, you don't have his moves. <laughs> and uh, he's got a really beautiful picture of him and his girl in Miami. Was yes. that Miami? That was Hawaii. Oh, Hawaii. Yeah. Was Hawaii, yeah. Um, he's got like, like, you know, when hopefully I marry my girl. And I could take a picture like that because it's like <laughs> super, super fire. Yeah, man. Um, Appreciate it, man. But, Thank you know, you. you can follow him at Phil Wright. Yeah, Phil underscore Wright underscore. Um, that's my IG. You can follow me on Twitter, which is Phil Wright 7. Mm-hmm. You can also follow, please, please, if you haven't already, follow the Parent Jam page right now the Parent on Jam. Instagram. It is going to be the next wave if not already just get on the train now um i do have a um, merchandise i'm paired up i'm partnered with influ monster Mm -hmm. um we're coming out with our new uh merch drop where i'm having pop sockets wristbands um uh leggings yes 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 wristbands for my i call my kids chicken nuggets uh-huh. <laughs> they love it <laughs> yeah yeah i love chicken so, nuggets. Uh, everyone loves chicken yeah. nuggets so i call my kids chicken nuggets and then the older ones are like chicken strips uh-huh. and the adults are chicken wings and then like <laughs> the grandparents are like uh chicken gids or turkeys. something <laughs> <You're Just right>. <laughs> <laughs> like chicken crumbs or something yeah. like that but yeah man um dad i have the apparel coming out very very soon the Parent Jam page. YouTube. Um, YouTube. Uh, go to uh, youtube.com backslash Phil Wright. Just type in Phil Wright. You guys are going to be like, this guy's bananas. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just going to see straight up. Like, there's no talking. It's just like, here it is, bro. Here's 10 minutes. It's just insane yeah. craziness of shit. You'll never be able to do because you were not born physically and have the soul <laughs> this will has because it's insane. Right, like man. straight up and I'm, I'm I'm, again I'm blessed that you came up and gave me a chance um, you know to podcast with you so I appreciate that yo bro thank you yeah. for having me I love it here um, definitely looking to work more with you we're, yeah. we're, we're gonna talk yeah definitely. and then if you see him at a poker game because he also likes cards yeah. um, you should probably not sit at that table cause I'm gonna laugh all day he's gonna laugh when he beats you I, yeah I'm probably not <laughs> yeah I probably would laugh yeah so but you know other than that yeah it was really good to meet you Phil and man. hang out with you today I appreciate it I appreciate it. you Barry man thank All right. you man All right. appreciate you thank you see you later now tuned into the high functioning show in the place to be don't shout don't run don't hide don't stop this is me coming to you naturally and live oh uh, yeah how y'all feel out there alright uh, and it goes a little something like this. One, two, check this check out. This out. <laughs>